Happy to actually understand my speech. Um, so this video is going to be presenting a analog speech scrambler that I made back in the year 2014 while in college. Here displayed Bleh. is the scrambler. Now, it's a very uh, simple device to operate. There's a total of four controls. Gain, which is a preamplifier input gain control. Filter, which is a low pass filter control, like a tone control. Frequency, which adjusts the carrier frequency. And on the back is volume. Yes, this is a dimmer switch knob. <laughs> the back also has a dimmer switch knob as well. Here's the back of the scrambler. This looks like it was constructed many years ago on the style. And it does use some vintage, uh, a vintage case and labelers, but it was only made as recently as 2014. So I got an input, output, and then volume control. It's got a built-in speaker. Volume control does not adjust output level. It only adjusts the built-in speaker's volume. And there's the dark front. Gee, bloody whiz. Freaking lighting is cr like crap over here. So there's the front. Nice vintage knob there. Quite a selection of different knob types. So we turn it on. And you can hear, aside from some AC buzz, there's a high frequency carrier sound. If I put the filter all the way up, or, well, not to filter anything, you can hear the uh, noise quite loudly. And just the carrier frequency. It's an old pot, so it is a little scratchy.
Oh, you can hear the carrier for much better when I turn the gain down. Volume control. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely got a lot of noise. It's not the best design out there. So let's turn that down. We plug in an external mic, Sony F96, to the input on the back. The uh, microphone is very weak in level, so I have to turn up the gain. Hello, this is uh, me speaking to the speech stumbler. Turn down the filter. Hello, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This is speaking to the speech stumbler. I need to put some better filtering in there, but anyway, you got to hear the uh, speech scrambler operate in a basic way. Now, the speech scrambler, the way it look, works, oh man, whoa, brother, let's get a pencil of paper out, huh? So, we look on the frequency domain as opposed to the time domain. You might be thinking, my gosh, negative frequency, how is that even possible? But, within the frequency domain, you can have something in the negative frequency. The idea is, is you'll have, let's say, a signal, no carrier frequency, it's just a signal. Let's say the information is shaped like that. This is based on what I learned in college back in 2014. Varying amplitudes, let's just say that's a speech signal. You'll notice the differing in amplitude, it's just for illustration. I give it a shape so that it's easy to see it shift. You can see, obviously, the part that you'll hear is all in the positive frequency domain of changing frequencies and changing amplitude. Now look at this graph. We now have a carrier frequency of 3 kilohertz. Now this is the same way a radio transmitter works for amplitude modulation. You'll notice that the actual full spectrum of the actual audio signal, but they are centered around the carrier frequency instead of around 0 hertz as before. And you'll also have a duplicate in the negative frequency side. Let's get it a little bit closer together to illustrate this point. Notice that before the audio was shaped like this. If we shift it over just enough, the audio instead is shaped the other way around. Right next to that zero. So now if we put a low pass filter in here, and we make that cutoff frequency right at that 3 kilohertz. Ideally, we would chop out all this side. In reality, it's going to bend down a little bit like that. But you'll notice what happens is we're now keeping this inverted side. The frequencies now have been reversed. We cut off this side. The better, the more sharper the filter, the more of that you'll cut off. But you cut off the side that sounds um, normal with the frequencies not inverted. You only leave the side that has inverted frequencies that you brought over from having a carrier frequency. When you do that, you take the speech signals and literally invert their frequencies. Then, whenever you descramble it by using the same scrambler and passing the scrambled signal through with the same carrier frequency, it will correct itself because you'll take uh, this side over here, 
bring it over with the normal shape passing through. You'll have the same distance. That signal there will appear right here. And it will be descrambled. Enter the UHER 4000 Report S reel to reel tape recorder from 1964. This device will be used to record scrambled speech through the speech scrambler and then it will play back the speech through the scrambler to descramble the speech. Then you'll sh you should be able to understand the descrambled speech although it will be quite distorted nonetheless for this is not a perfect scrambler. We are ready to record scrambled speech. I am recording that. I am recording scrambled speech. Tapping into the speech finger. Now we've recorded scrambled speech. Let's listen to the scrambled speech playback in scrambled form. Now, let's play back the scrambled speech through the descrambler. Clearly very distorted. Let's try another carrier frequency and see if we can get a little bit better sound. First, this isn't a scrambled playback of another test recording on a different carrier frequency. <laughs> Now, let's play that recording back through the scrambler to descramble the speech. Clearly the sound quality that time was far greater. Now, while playing back that scrambled speech, let's try playing with the carrier frequency and the filter to see how it affects the sound. Thank <laughs> you. 
The bad news is the schematic for this is hand drawn and resides on a notebook that I'm afraid is back in Arkansas. But the good news is, is it really is not too hard to make one of these if you have some electronics experience. Basically, to do the modulation, you, you use a ring modulator which uses four diodes and two transformers. You can find ring modulator schematics on the internet. And you have a sine wave carrier frequency and then you use the ring, modular, ring modulator with that to modulate the audio and then you have a low pass filter. This particular unit here I used a, I think it was a TL084 quad op amp chip. I used op amp, some of the op amps for, to make an oscillator, one for the uh, gain control I believe and one for the low pass filter or something like that and then I have an LM386 audio amplifier for the speaker. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you can find formulas online for resistors and capacitor values for the filter. Again I apologize I don't have the schematic on hand but I hope you enjoyed this video of the homemade speech scrambler. Not the best, not the sharpest filter in the world. It's got a lot of background hum noise. It isn't the best, but it does illustrate the idea of speech scrambling and it does work. Also, if you scramble speech on speech scrambling software that does the same kind of speech scrambling. You can descramble it using this machine as well as if it's scrambled on this it can be descrambled using the software. I hope you enjoyed this video shot on the 29th of December within the confines of this dying year 2017 which has gone by ridiculously fast. Oh.